time to tune in. Now the Nether Sports Center, it's a movement. What's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Touchdown with yours truly, Doug Smith. Now, as you guys see, I got some folks here in the house who are wearing navy blue and orange. That's right, folks. We're talking about the Chicago Bears, the Bears. And yes, man, the Bears are now great again. A lot of stuff happened in the draft. I got two diehard Chicago Bears fans with me right now. I got my homie Smoking Jerry's Booze and Bros podcast. And I got my homie Dom Rosano. Both these guys are, are local from Illinois. Plus, not to mention Dom Rosano, you got to check him out. He's part of Moneyline Media, and he has a couple dope shows. Smoking Jay, starting with you, if you could let the good, before we start the episode, let the good folks know where they can find you. For sure, for sure. First off, man, I appreciate you having me on again, man. It, it's always a pleasure being on here, man. Shout out, Dougie, everybody out there. It's your boy, Smoking Jay. You guys can find me on IG at Fantasy Fornicator. You can find me and the Bros podcast on Instagram, too, at Bears Brews and the Bros. That's D-A-B-R-O-S. Let's go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jay. And then my homie, Dom Rosano, man, what's going on? Happy to have you. Let the good folks know yeah. where they can find you at. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Doug. Real quick, normally I do rock that Navy. Today I'm in that scarlet and gray. Justin Fields, baby, coming in Chicago. Bear down, baby. But, yeah, you can find all my stuff, moneylinemedia.com, blogs, podcasts, videos, including the Touchdown with Doug Smith, Bear With Us podcast. Check them all out. Man, love it all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you guys know we about to get into the meat and potatoes. The reason you, you fell for the clickbait. That's all right, folks. We talking Chicago Bears today. Um, you guys can jump in whenever you want. I want to take and talk this draft and how important this draft was. What are your guys' thoughts? I think it was an A draft. Love it. A lot of home runs all around. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, right off top, I mean, yeah, A, even A plus, even. I haven't seen a draft like this. I can't remember the last time I saw a draft like this where I legit feel great about all these draft picks. We walked away with two first round draft picks, you know, and only having one and then trading up. We got our franchise quarterback. It's just Ryan Pace got that second chance. I don't know why McCaskey gave it to him. Honestly, we all wanted him gone, but he got that second chance. It's his, this is his time at redemption time. And he's off on the right with the, on the right foot. So let's keep it going. Yeah, to go off of that, you know, Justin Fields at the 11th pick after trading up finally got a franchise quarterback. He's got all the intangibles to do so. He scored a 130 on that uh, that test that they had him take, which is the highest of all time. Patrick Mahomes scored a 108 on that. So to think, you know, the one problem that Chicago had with the quarterback with Trubisky is that, in my opinion, he was dumb as rocks. He couldn't go through the playbook. They had to dummy it down, and as a result, it shrunk and they sucked. But Fields, it should be able to open the playbook back up. Tevin Jenkins should be able to maul on either the left or the right side after Charles Leno was just cut. I mean, I ideally believe he's a better right tackle than left tackle and should be a pro bowler on the right side. But if he's got to play left tackle for a year or two, so be it. But now one guy I really like who they drafted in the fifth round was Larry Borum out of Mizzou. The dude allowed two sacks his whole career. And he played against Alabama this past season, about 45 pass snaps, zero sacks, pressures, hurries, nothing. He shows he can hold his ground against big talent. And and those three guys, the first three picks, I thought it was fantastic. Oh, yeah, man. The t it's my bad, Dougie, man. It's like we're taking over your show, oh, man. Good, my bad. Hey, we got Chicago. Support, man. We, hey, man. Hey, man. Look, I just wanted to add with, with Larry Bor Borum over there, man. This guy, he's been working so hard in the offseason, shedding some weight. He's hit like every single day. He's training hard. You love the work ethic. He was – Mock draft by like McShay and Kuiper to go to the Bears at, with the third round pick when he had it originally, and we got him in the fifth. That's another steal right there. So big time. I love the draft all the way around, man. I got no complaints. That's awesome. The two guys I also like was uh, Khalil Herbert and Daz Newsom, who should help on special teams immediately. Got a kick returner and Herbert and a punt returner and Newsom. No more Anthony Miller back there, muffin punts every single time. Tariq Cohen struggling to find a little gap with his five foot six frame. Man, a little bit of everything. We needed it too with right. Patterson. With Patterson being gone, you know, we, yeah. we needed we needed that help, a special uh, special team. So in a return game, so I don't mind those two either. And Bears fans, more than anybody, they know that one thing that really hurt the team last year was Eddie Goldman opting out, and in the seventh round with Kyrus Tonga being picked up, 
dude, dude held his own at the at the nose tackle position. He's not a pass rusher, but man, he can run stuff. He's a big guy. You can't you can't teach strength and and size. That's just you know you either got it or you don't. You know what I'm saying? So that's definitely what he got. He got raw talent. Man, I can't wait to see this old line, Dougie. You already see it, man. We we ex- we're excited. We haven't felt like this. I'm telling you. I remember when when Ryan Pace drafted. You know, you already know who. I was like, you know what? He's a new GM. Let's give him a chance to see what this quarterback is about. I yeah. thought it was going to be Watson, whatever. This time it was different. This time it's like, oh, shit, we got our guy. Let's go, man. We ready. Absolutely. And, and you know what's exciting yeah. for the Bears, too, is that Aaron Rodgers just said he possibly ain't coming back. <laughs> so that's one. The Vikings, they got they a lot of draft picks, but the Vikings, the Vikings, as long as they have Kirk Cousins, they ain't doing nothing. That's just what it is. He's going to ball out for four or five games, and that's Kirk Cousins, you know. Uh, Detroit's still Detroit. They got it. They got they got a new coach, so we'll see what happens with that. But overall, y'all had y'all won the y'all won the division as far as the draft goes, man. And not only that, you guys already have a lot of ballers on your team, man. It's just getting the quarterback, the right personnel, and man, beautiful, beautiful things that happen in Chicago. Now, uh, are, are there any uh, UDFA's or undrafted free agents you guys uh, have your eyes on right now who recently got signed yeah. to the team? Yeah, there's one guy I love coming out of Virginia, and that's Snowden. Um, I was studying him a little bit. He's six foot seven, two forty. He's got to gain some weight, but he's a big guy. He's going to be a project. Immediately coming out reminds me of Roy Robertson Harris, who just left Chicago and signed a nice three year deal with Jacksonville. Watching him, man, they're pretty similar players. The size coming out, Harrison gained about uh, I want to say forty to fifty pounds in his you know, two to three years in Chicago. And if Snowden can do that, I mean, I think he should be able to replicate and be a nice depth piece on that defensive line. Yeah, we got a they, they added a bunch of O-line, man. A bunch of them. One one guy from Mississippi State, uh, Darian Parker, man. Just big body, big body, six foot four, three fifty-five, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, we're we're stacking up, we beefing up the front line. The, the trenches is gonna be nasty. It's gonna be nasty. It's gonna be fun to see Monty, you know, behind that line, Justin Fields. I'm I'm picturing it. That split back combo, Cohen, Monty, Fields in the middle. Oh man, we we fucking them up all day, baby. Let's go. I'm telling you, I'm hype. But now, do we keep uh, Cohen now with uh, Khalil Herbert? They're basically the same player. Herbert's more physical, averaged, what, 4.1 yards after contact in college this past season, which was tied for first in the whole college football? That, you know what? They got to figure it out because Cohen, he got a nice extension last year before he got injured. So, uh, you know, there's no way Herbert is just going to take over that spot right away. But maybe in a year. If we could get the, that money off the books, if Herbert could prove himself, I got no problem with that at all. So why not? Yeah, it seems like it's been a trend this offseason, beefing up in the trenches. Us Bears fans, we were led in Ryan Pace had for just neglecting the offensive line in the drafts. Double dipped on it this time. It seems like the whole undrafted time, you got what? I think there's three offensive linemen that was signed in there. Defensive linemen added uh, one in the draft and was it four in the undrafted area? Man, it, there's a lot of depth coming in Chicago now, and that's something to be excited for. Absolutely. And, and I'll take it. I'll add to it's not often, not often. You guys know what power does. Power corrupts. And it's not often you have signing with the power of pace and they could he just do what he want, you know, to an extent, you know, until he gets fired. But um, it's very rare that somebody they get out of their own way They get out of their own way. It must have been somebody who was possibly in his ear like, hey, listen, man. You out of here. <laughs> you keep making these stupid moves, you know, like and, and the way I see the Chicago Bears, they're they're a gem of the NFL. Eighty five Bears, man. Walter Payton, man. Gail Sayers, man. Just Dick Buckus. I mean, the names go on and on. Brian Urlacher and so forth. Right. Uh, so, man, this is this is really, really excited. It's nice to see that division shaking up, man, because Bears Bears about to be running things here very, very soon. Yeah, I want to add one more thing real quick. This probably broke just maybe 90 minutes ago with Demir Bird being signed, the wide receiver who played for New England last year, caught 47 balls, 604 yards, and 14 starts. Wow. When you think of Justin Fields, he loves chucking that ball deep, and that's something Mitch Trubisky didn't like doing, mainly because he couldn't. You know, he just didn't have it in him. Going back to 2016, my, uh, my page says Demir Bird ran a 4.2840. And now you're pairing that with Darnell Mooney from last year who ran a 4.38 and Marquise Goodwin, who's coming this year to Chicago on a one-year deal, who back in 2013 ran a 4.27. 
there are ballers who can fly down the field. And that's something that is going to be very evident when we are watching Chicago Bears this season. It's going to be one of those things like pick your poison. You, you're going to cover those receivers who got top-notch speed. That's cool. We got the, the O-line and we got the running game. We got the trenches. So pick your poison. That Those are some good points, man. We got some speedsters on the outside. So hell yeah, man. That was a, that's a good sign. Bird, Bird is decent, man. He's got good hands too, man. Yeah, you got to, you solid. got to, yeah. you got to if Cam Newton is throwing you the ball. So, you know, he, he's got some <laughs> <laughs> sound bite right there. <laughs> Let's go, man. I, and, uh, and, and Jay, you brought up a good point. They brought in a lot of guys in the trenches, lots of whether it be UDFAs or, you know, in the draft. And what's nice is that like you, you find when teams, when they invest in their, you know, in the trenches, the D line, the O line, a lot of games are won and lost in there. A lot of stuff goes down in there. There's been teams you look at the, for example, the Dolphins from four years ago, back when Gase was there. And I remember, man, we had Mike Wallace, Brian Hartline, Kenny Stills. We had just great receivers. Uh, Jay Ajayi was tearing it up. But like our O-line was terrible. I mean, terrible. It was so bad. Just Charles Barkley, terrible. And but again, can you imagine had that O-line been there? You know what I mean? And, and that's a Miami Dolphins is just one example is many other teams where, man, they got the receivers, but the O-line is whack. Arizona last year, O-line was whack, you know. So to see Chicago taking doing this, man, new quarterback, Andy Dolan, move out the way. Let the real ballers step up. Yes, it's sir. big, man. You add you add that young quarterback. You got to protect them. You got to you got to man. give them the weapons, give them the blocking up front. Let him just concentrate on the playbook. Give him some time. If he runs out of time, he could literally run and buy some time. That's the best thing about this kid. He's not a run first type of QB. You know, they had to make in order to make Mitch work. Like you said, you had to dummy down the playbook, literally dummy it all the way down and roll him out left and right. That's all you were doing with this guy. You don't got to do that. He could sit in a pocket. Nobody's there. He's running. But that's like his last option, man. This guy has a true quarterback. Yeah, Justin Fields, he's not just going to win games, but he will be responsible for winning games. He's a game manager who can go out, put the game on his shoulders, basically, and win it for Chicago. That's something we never saw with Trubisky. Like, going back to something you said earlier, I remember when he was first taken uh, back in 2017. Like, I shed a couple tears on that one. I I was pissed off. I I hated it. But then when Fields gets taken, you know, I was just hoping it wasn't Mac Jones. And then that was just the one thing I was worried about said Justin Fields was taken, boom. And the whole atmosphere in Chicago was completely different. You can just feel the buzz already. And he hasn't even stepped foot in the uh, on Soldier Field yet. And that's going to happen in just a couple months. Absolutely. All right. And then before we take, we finish off the episode, predictions for this year. What do you guys got? Now, mind you, keep in mind, there's an extra game in the season. So what you guys got? I, I know it's a little early. It's a little, we still got free agents to come back. June 1st and stuff. So still a lot to be done. Preseason ain't even happened yet. Draft was yeah. literally uh, not even a week ago. Probably about a week by the time this episode drops. What you guys think? So I, I got like two. I got like two different versions, right? Like one mm-hmm. is if they actually do try to, you know, slow pay, slow play Justin Fields. Like if they actually do try to do that, you know, I think Andy Dalton eventually, you know, he's he's not going to be able to hold up. We saw in Dallas, he had all these weapons. He wasn't even doing that good, like at all, with the good old line too at that. So, I think one one would one record could be um, it could be like six and eleven, seven and ten with Dalton. If Fields comes in early though, if they let him rock from you know maybe even from week one, I think just his the the fact that he's so dynamic and he brings so much to that offense. We know our defense is already up there. We just need our offense to be just above average. We'll be straight, man. And I know Justin Fields could do that. So if he plays, I got him at 10 and seven. See, I'm a little bit even more optimistic, but I think it all comes down to where the buy lands on the schedule. Whenever that becomes released, if that's an early buy, Andy Dalton starts until that bye week. Let's say it's a week five buy. I think they go three and two in that stretch. Fields comes in after the bye. He takes over pretty similar to what the Dolphins did last year with Tua, you know, but they were on a streak though, which I, I don't like with the way uh, the Dolphins handled that. If they're, if you're winning, you go into that bye. Okay. You stick with Dalton. However, if you're not winning, that's when you flip the script. I think they can go anywhere from 13 and four. If field starts all the way through potentially 10 and seven, 
I think the worst case scenario I'm seeing about nine and eight. If that's Dalton going through like week eight. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Sounds good to me, man. I ain't mad at that. I'll take anything above 500. (laughs) <laughs> man, we yeah, need it. Here, here's the thing, man. If I, and, I, and I'll end with this note, you know, Kansas City, you know, was it uh, three years ago? They came into the playoffs and they made a lot of noise. And then they, you know, like they punched the NFL in the mouth. And then the following year, which would have been last year, they won the Super Bowl, right? Um, you look at uh, the Titans from two years ago, they punched the NFL in the mouth. You look at the Ravens, punched the NFL in the mouth. And what happened is that they got a new regime of players, you know what I mean? That Everybody was, oh, yeah, eight and they, you know, seven and whatever. But then they got it together and nobody saw it coming coming until the playoffs happened. You're like, oh, snap, this team's actually two games away from the Super Bowl. Right now, obviously, it's still early on. You know, you got you got a few really good teams at NFC. Uh, I will say AFC is a lot more competitive, right, just at this moment comparing the divisions. But NFC, man, I, I'll, I'll give my prediction, man. I think y'all shocked the world, man. I think y'all take and win 11 games, man. 11 and uh, uh, 11 and 5, if I'm saying that, or 11 17. Yeah. Or oh, sorry. 11 games, and I'm so, I'm not used to the, the 11 and 6, right? 11 and 6. Yeah. See, th- this is why I was on special ed, man. This is why. Now you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> but I got you guys winning 11 games, man. And uh, sounds good. Uh, and, but you, like you said, if Andy Dalton, if he sticks around longer, um, and who's, who knows? Maybe he plays a little bit better. I, he, man, I don't think I don't I don't see that happening. Honestly, I, I really don't. I'm just saying, like, I, you know, with Matt Nagy and Pace, I just feel like they are buying time. And if they stall out that, you know, Justin Fields starting, let's say he comes in like after the bye week, like you said, you know, after week five, they're like, well, and, and let's say they have a horrible record. They could come in next year and be like, look. You got to give us one more chance. Let us start the season with Justin Fields week one. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm a conspiracy type of dude. So I'm always thinking like pacing. I just don't trust pace still. You did good, you know, but I don't trust you all the way yet. <laughs> Can't do it. I feel that. I feel that, man. Well, hey, you guys, I thank you guys so much for taking, coming on the show today. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Before y'all even hit like on my video, before y'all hit subscribe, oh, Doug's a cool sh- Hit these guys up, man. They got some dope content, man. Uh, Jay, starting with you, let the good folks know where they can find you. And then right after Dom, if you could let them know as well, too. Yeah, you can find me on IG at Fantasy Fornicator. Me and the bros, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and on IG at Bears Brews and the bros. Appreciate you once again, Dougie, man. Much love. And my man over there, man, bear the fuck down. Let's go. Bear down, baby. Yes, sir. Yeah, but for me, I would appreciate it if you can go check out Moneyline Media. Uh, you check out the Bear With Us podcast, Apple, Google, Spotify, all of that. Head up Moneyline Media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We got it all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you guys took and saw it, man. Y'all hit these dudes up. They're super duper dope, especially if you love Chicago Bears, man. That's definitely where you want to take and be plugged in that. And also as well, show your boys some love. If you guys take and agree with them, let us know down below in the description. If you disagree, hey, let's have a conversation about it. You guys let us know right down below in the description. Go ahead, hit that thumbs up. Hit that bell for an alert. God bless you guys. And wash your nasty, dirty hands. Have a good night. Time to tune in. Now another sports center. It's a movement.